Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, a fun little Intarsia recipe box. Well, I'm sure that some of you know a baker or someone who loves to cook in your family, and what better gift than a custom-made recipe card box? Now, this is not a difficult project. It mostly centers around the scroll saw, and it all starts off with some cherry and a little bit of layout over at the bench. Now, for the main body of the box, I have two pieces of cherry. And these pieces of cherry measure six and three quarter inches long, they're three and three quarter inches wide, and their thickness is one and five eighths of an inch. So I have two of those that we will glue together a little later. But for now, we need to mark out the interior of our box that we have to cut. Now the size of the opening that we're going to want to end up with here is two and a half inches wide by five and a quarter inches long. So in order to do that, we want it centered. We're just going to place a mark on each of the length side at five eighths of an inch. And then on our short ends here, we're going to place a mark in at three quarters of an inch. So now if we want to check that with our tape, we can see here we have five and a quarter inches long and on the width we have two and a half. So I'm going to mark this on my other piece and then we're going to take it over to the scroll saw. Well, we now need to cut out that center section and there are a couple things to keep in mind here when cutting these pieces. Number one is it's a very thick piece. It's a tough cut. Let the saw do the cutting. As soon as you start trying to force the piece, you're going to deflect the blade and give a curved surface on the inside and we don't want that. The second thing you want to remember is get a sharp blade in there. Put a brand new scroll saw blade in there to make it as sharp as you can. And if you don't feel like it's cutting well at any point in time, either upsize your blade or put a new one in of the type you've got because obviously it's gotten dull. So let's get this cut out. Now, both of these sections were cut from the same piece of wood along the same length of grain, and that was done very intentionally because they're going to have to be glued together, and we want to be able to match grains and colors to at least make it appear to be one piece of wood. So we're going to attempt to achieve that. So at this point, you just want to make sure that your recipe cards will fit in there, and in fact, they do. And our next step is to glue these together. So line up your grains as best you can and once you get them lined up and you're happy with it, clamp this together and let it fully dry. And now that the glue is dried up, I'm just going to get inside here with a file and level out any edges that don't align. It's not too bad because we were careful when we followed the lines, but it is just a little off, so no big deal. Just get in there with a file and clean it up. 
Well, with the inside all leveled out and evened out, what I have is a quarter inch thick piece of cherry that was cut from the same boards. And we're going to glue that right onto the bottom and that will be the base of our box. So we'll glue this up, clamp it really well, and then we'll let that dry there. With the entire box dry, what I want to do now is I've tilted the table on my belt sander to five degrees, and we're just going to taper this base or this box here by five degrees. We'll just sand across until we start sanding our top lip here. We know we've gone enough. We'll also end up rounding off each one of these corners. And with our sanding done, I've used a palm sander and sanded it all the way around just to take out any of the uh, sanding belt marks that are in it. And that is our recipe box complete. Now we need to work on the lid. So let's put this aside and I'll show you what we need to do next. Well, for our lid, I have a chunk of mahogany and it is roughly a quarter of an inch all the way around bigger than what the top of our box is. In other words, it's a half an inch larger on the width and the length. It is also one and a quarter inches thick. And the first thing that I'm going to do, just so you can see what I'm going to do, <laughs> if that makes sense, is I'm going to glue a piece of just plain white paper on the top of our block. Well, I didn't have any plain paper, but I did have lined. So I'm gonna to try to explain this as best I can, so bear with me. I have my bevel set to a 40 degree angle and I have divided my board on the length into four equal sections. So at these equal marks, I'm going to place a line on our bevel or our bevel line, just like this. And one more. And these are just guidelines. And then from the other side, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but in the opposite direction. Just like this. And this. And this. Now, what we're trying to emulate is a, a braid. So if, you know, you were a baker and you were uh, braiding the bread, that is what we are trying to emulate. So we now need to shape these. They don't have to be perfect. In fact, you kind of want them to be a little off. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just sketch these out using our lines here as my guide for each one of the braids. Just like this. Okay, there is one piece of dough braided. And then I will bring this in here. You can see how we're kind of deviating from those lines because we want them to be kind of, not random, but we want them to be rough. There we go, just like that. All right, and then we will put another one. Let me just think here. This one here will be our next braid, I think. So this one here, just like this. And this corner one, of course, just like that. And then we'll have this corner one. All right. 
I think I'm going to make this one here all one piece. So we'll scratch out that one line there. And then we'll add another one here. I think right about here. Okay, and that is our pattern, I guess you'll call it, for our lid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to the scroll saw and I'm going to cut out each one of these pieces individually and then bring them back one at a time and reassemble them so that they all get put back together where they're supposed to be. Well, this is where the fun begins. And, well, not that we haven't had fun already, but this is where it gets even more fun. And what we're going to do is each individual piece here, I'm going to take it over to the belt sander and we're going to round it over as if it is, uh, well, we're going to make it three dimensional is what we're going to do. It's a little difficult to explain, but I'm gonna do one piece and then I'll come back and see you and show you what it should look like. So what I've done with the belt sander is I have carefully rounded over our edges just like that to give it that three-dimensional kind of a bun look. And that is how we're going to approach every single piece. So I'm going to shape them one at a time here and then once I get them all roughly shaped we can make slight adjustments by hand sanding uh, or sanding on the oscillating drum or even a palm sander. But for now, I need to get all of these top corners all rounded off so that things blend together. Once you're content with all of your interior shaping, of course we have a little bit of hand sanding to do there to even things out, but we need to round our outside edges now. So I'm going to take each outside piece over to the sander and we're just going to round off the bottom edges and try to make this less flat here so that it looks like a bun sticking out uh, over our base. So. I don't think we need a video again of me putting each piece in place. So I'm going to take care of that and I'll come back and show you what I've got. And once you're happy with the shaping of all your pieces, we can glue them back together. I will just caution you to only place glue along the bottom edges because we don't want to get any squeeze out in between any of our pieces up here. That would ruin the effect at this point. So we'll just glue along the bottom edges and put this whole thing back together. While we're waiting for the top to dry up, we can put that aside and take our original box. And what we need is a measurement here of exactly what it was that we cut. So even though we measured it out before, we'll just check the distance here. And this is actually a little less than two and a half, which was our original measurement. And over here we have five and a quarter. So we need to cut a piece of one eighth inch thick stock. It doesn't matter the species, but it needs to be the same dimensions as our interior of our box. So with our piece cut, we will glue that to the bottom of our lid centered all the way around and that will be the keeper for 
our box lid to sit inside our box. So we're going to give this a light sanding and then glue this piece of walnut in place. Now the very last thing to do to this project is apply a finish. I don't want a shiny finish on this as it's supposed to emulate a loaf of bread. So uh, all I'm going to do is apply a few coats of Danish oil to this project and that should pretty much finish it off. And there you have it. A recipe box. Guys, this project is a load of fun and the best part about it really is that other than a scroll saw and a sander, what did we really use? Um, that's about it. This entire project is able to be made just on the scroll saw. There's no fancy patterns, there's no fancy diagrams, there's no fancy processes. All it is is cutting out your box, gluing it together, sanding the shape, being that five degree taper, and then making the lid. The lid, you can draw whatever shape you want. Uh, when I was young, my mother used to make homemade bread and it would be three solid buns, like three sections. It wasn't braided like this. So you can choose whatever it is that you want. If you want to have one whole section instead of going the braided route, why not have the entire piece of mahogany shaped and rounded to be that browned bun of the entire loaf of bread? It doesn't have to be this braided thing. And if you're not confident enough to draw that out like what I showed here today on the show, then by all means, alter the project and make it your own. This thing is a fantastic gift idea. If your spouse or your significant other or your mom or your dad or whoever, your friends, your family, your co-workers, it doesn't matter who, if they love to bake or if they are one that love to collect recipes and are known for it, what a fantastic gift this would be. And I mean, look at the way the finish brought it out. Look at the colors of the mahogany and of the cherry. It is just spectacular. It just jumps right out at you. It is just so gorgeous once you add the oil. I don't know anybody who wouldn't love to get this. So what about alternative methods here? Well, why not flock the inside? Why not add flocking? You've seen me do it here on the show. You could add flocking to the inside to give it that extra little special look. If that's not your thing and you don't want to do flocking, then just leave it as is. It's your project, it's your imagination that's going to put it all together. So have some fun with it and don't get so hung up on doing it exactly like how I do it. Guys, this project, scroll saw work, intarsia work, the sanding, I will say one thing about the sanding, please, 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 I can't say it enough. Get some dust collection there and get a dust mask on. You want to keep that dust out of your respiratory system. It's pretty hard to work in the shop if you don't have usable lungs. So how about keeping the sawdust out of there and wear the mask? I know they're uncomfortable. I know they're annoying. I know they're warm. I get it. but how much more uncomfortable would you be if you can't breathe properly because you've buggered up your lungs with sawdust. So guys, take care of yourself while you're making your projects. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. This has been a ton of fun and I hope that you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. Guys, I honestly hope that you're going to try this one for yourself. I want to thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.